Dear viewers, welcome to this new video on Epidemic Diseases Act 1897. Hope you all are keeping fine even in the midst of this coronavirus scare and none of my friends have contracted the deadly infection. It is important for all of us to know the legal side of the matter, that is, the prevalent law of the country to prevent spread of the disease. This video concentrates on the details of this act. Before proceeding further, I request the viewers to please subscribe this channel and also click the bell icon to get notified about any future video uploaded here. Viewers are reminded that subscribing a channel does not cost any money. It's completely free. Friends, you already know that the government of India had declared total lockdown of the operations of the country excepting the essential services for a period of 21 days with effect from 25th March 2020. All schools, colleges, universities have been closed. Gyms, theatre and cinema halls, swimming pools, parks, etc. are also under shutdown. International flights to and from all the airports of the country had been cancelled. All long distance as also the local train services had been withdrawn. All religious, political, social, entertainment and sports programs have been postponed indefinitely. The government has strictly advised all citizens to stay at home and do their work from home. Malls, restaurants, hotels and unnecessary travel should also be strictly avoided. All these actions have been taken by the central and state governments only to protect us from the deadly COVID-19 disease. According to the scientific and medical fraternity, the virus responsible for the disease known as coronavirus is extremely contagious and it spreads from person to person by touch or through sneezing, coughing, spitting. But it is not airborne. This is why government is putting special emphasis and making mass awareness campaign on social distancing, personal hygiene like sanitizing hands frequently, wearing masks wherever necessary and personal protective equipment for all doctors and persons associated with such medical services. Now the question arises as to how the government is taking all these actions. Yes, the government is taking all these actions on the strength of a 123-year-old act that came into force in 1897 and which had been used by the British rulers to imprison freedom fighters. The Epidemic Diseases Act of 1897 gives special powers to the state governments. India's Narendra Modi government has already advised states to use it to make their coronavirus advisories more stringent. Now, let us look at the act in details. This act has four sections named 1. Short title and extent 2. Powers to take special measures and prescribe regulations as to dangerous epidemic disease 2a 
powers of central government three penalty four protection to persons acting under the act the purpose of the epidemic diseases act 1897 an act to provide for the better prevention of the spread of dangerous epidemic diseases section 2 power to take special measures and prescribe regulations as to dangerous epidemic disease one when at any time the state government is satisfied that the state or any part thereof is visited by or threatened with an outbreak of any dangerous epidemic disease the state government if it thinks that the ordinary provisions of the law for the time being in force are insufficient for the purpose may take or require or empower any person to take such measures and by public notice prescribe such temporary regulations to be observed by the public or by any person or class of persons as it shall deem necessary to prevent the outbreak of such disease or the spread thereof and may determine in what manner and by whom any expenses incurred including compensation if any shall be defrayed thus it is amply clear that the state government is empowered to make further regulations to prevent spread of the dangerous epidemic if existing laws or regulations are found to be insufficient however these regulations have to be temporary in nature two in particular and without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing provisions the state government may take measures and prescribe regulations for b the inspection of persons travelling by railway or otherwise and the segregation in hospital temporary accommodation or otherwise of persons suspected by the inspecting officer of being infected with any such disease clause 2b is also very important in the present context because this enables authorized state government officials or medical staff to physically inspect persons who have traveled by train or flight or otherwise and if suspected of infection may be advised home quarantine or isolation in a hospital or a temporary accommodation as deemed necessary karnataka where 29 people have tested positive as of 23 march 2020 implemented the legislation on march 11 it was the first indian state to do so the covid-19 specific regulations the state announced will be in place for a year haryana in the north declared coronavirus an epidemic under this act on march 12 maharashtra which has the highest recorded cases of coronavirus has since enforced the act along with delhi and goa thus this law enables states to ban public gatherings ask schools and large institutions to stop functioning and issue advisories to companies to explore work from home models it also gives the state a right to penalize media organizations spreading misinformation section 2a powers of central government when the central government is satisfied that india or any part thereof is visited by or threatened with an outbreak of any dangerous epidemic disease and that the ordinary provisions of the law for the time being in force are insufficient to prevent the outbreak of such disease or the spread thereof 
the central government may take measures and prescribe regulations for the inspection of any ship or vessel leaving or arriving at any port in the territories to which this act extends and for such detention thereof or of any person intending to sail therein or arriving thereby as may be necessary as per this section the central government of india may make further regulations if the existing laws or rules are considered insufficient to prevent spread or outbreak of such contagious diseases for the inspection of ships or vessels or any person sailing with such ships arriving or leaving any port of the country section 3 penalty any person disobeying any regulation or order made under this act shall be deemed to have committed an offence punishable under section 188 of the indian penal code this section 3 deals with the enforcement mechanism of the act that is if any person violates the provisions of this act or any other regulation promulgated by the state or central government on the strength of this act such violation will tantamount to punishable offence and the punishment meted out to the person will be in accordance with section 188 of the indian penal code now let us look at what section 188 of indian penal code provides whoever knowing that by an order promulgated by a public servant lawfully empowered to promulgate such order he is directed to abstain from a certain act or to take certain order with certain property in his possession or under his management disobeys such direction shall if such disobedience causes or tends to cause obstruction annoyance or injury or risk of obstruction annoyance or injury to any persons lawfully employed be punished with simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to 1 month or with fine which may extend to 200 rupees or with both and if such disobedience causes or tends to cause danger to human life health or safety or causes or tends to cause a riot or a fray shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 6 months or fine which may extend to 1000 rupees or with both it is not necessary that the offender should intend to produce harm or contemplate his disobedience as likely to produce harm it is sufficient that he knows of the order which he disobeys and that his disobedience produces or is likely to produce harm section 4 protection to persons acting under this act no suit or other legal proceeding shall lie against any person for anything done or in good faith intended to be done under this act this is the last section of the act which safeguards the hospital administrators doctors paramedical staff nurses and other persons directly or indirectly involved with such medical facilities no suit or legal action can be instituted for any cause of action pertaining to the medical services rendered by persons 
towards prevention of spread of epidemic diseases however there are certain limitations of the century old act like the following as per the experts opinion by vinod kumar patra jay prasad tripathi and reshmi kashyap available in the journal of mahatma gandhi institute of medical sciences a epidemic act 1897 is silent on the definition of dangerous epidemic disease b the territorial boundaries of the act needs a relook c the act is mum on the legal framework of availability and distribution of vaccine and drugs and implementation of response measures d there is no explicit reference pertaining to the ethical aspects or human rights principle during a response to an epidemic e the punishment for violation of regulations under section 188 of the indian penal code also warrants a revision thus it is far beyond doubt that this century old act needs a complete overhaul to cater to the changing public health priorities i think i have been able to make a detailed explanation of the act and spelt out the consequences of not obeying the law so friends let us all stay at home for the entire lockdown period unless we have to do something of extreme emergency nature thank you viewers for watching the video till the end the video is concluded here today with a promise to create more such interesting videos in future i hope that the viewers have loved the video and if so would request them to click the like button and share with their friends to enable them to watch the same